Hello, Cubers. Welcome to another MTG Vintage Cube Draft. And oh man, what a pack. Double power. And we get the Black Lotus for a pick one, pack one. Super lucky, super excited to see how the rest of this draft is going to shape up. When you get a first pick Black Lotus, it can really skew how you draft the rest of the pod. That's because having that three mana acceleration can really get some aggressive starts going in either mono white or mono red. But I'm not sure we're going to go white or red. I do just want to slam this Lotus and see what else we can pick up that is powerful. All right, here in pack two, another good set of cards. I see a Glenelendra, Time Warp, Ponder. That's what I'm leaning towards with this Black Lotus. Now, Black Lotus, not the greatest in a control shell, but taking multiple turns is pretty sweet. And the Lotus really helps enable that five mana Time Warp. There's also a Tidehuller Sculler, but since it's two colors, I can't cast it off the Lotus by itself. So I'm going to lean towards this single color, strong Time Warp spell. All right, pack three. Ooh, there's a third pick Crater Hoof Behemoth, but I don't really want to take the mono green route or the green route. Black Lotus is not great in a green deck, so I'm looking at either the Factor Fiction, maybe the Creeping Tar Pit, or the Vampiric Tutor. Those are the cards that are standing out to me that I really want to play, especially paired with this Time Warp. So seeing as how we have some strong cards, I think I'm going to want to pick up this Factor Fiction get another blue spell, and Factor Fiction is one of the greatest draw spells of all time. Considering the Vampiric Tutor, but not sure I want to commit to two colors yet, if we take the blue card, that'll just continue to cut blue to our left. Ooh, after picking up two strong spells like Time Warp or Factor Fiction, Snapcaster Mage is looking really appealing. Now again, would love to have some cheaper spells to, to couple with Snapcaster Mage, but I really like the Human Wizard. Going into pick five, there's an upheaval. Maybe we're doing this artifact thing or just ramp thing. It is this very strong blue spell. And the rest of the cards in this pack aren't really the direction we're going right now. So we'll take it. And then no blue cards here in pick six, though. A Sensei's Divining Top can really help us get the cards we're looking for in our deck. There is a Tezzeret. We not sure if Tezzeret's the direction we need to go. We don't have a lot of artifacts. Sensei's Divining Top is just a searchable spell, but I will pick up the Tezzeret here, kind of hedge in. It is the Evelyn Blue card, and blue is definitely really drying up here. So we're definitely going to have to look at another color. Gideon, Suspicious Stowaway, Celestia Signet, even Tanglewire. Tanglewire is pretty strong, but we're not aggressive. You got to be aggressive to utilize Tanglewire well. I think I just want to pick up the Stowaway. Blue is just really drying up. We're going to have to find another direction to go. Finale of Devastation may work with this blue green thing. And holy jeez, a 10th pick Craterhoof Behemoth? Oh yeah. Okay, so that's a sign if I ever saw one. Craterhoof Behemoth into Rex Sage. And I think we just decided that we're going to play blue-green. We already picked up the finale before that. Creative of going that late is definitely a signal. There's a Magus of the Order. Not as great as Natural Order, but I suppose it will have to do. And a 14th pick, Grist the Hunger Tide. Okay, we're not in black yet, but Grist is very powerful. That card should not be going 14th pick. Let's get the Tezzeret out of here. It doesn't look like we're doing the artifact thing. Not sure if this upheaval is going to fit either. Let's see what we got here for pack two. A Jace, the Mind Sculptor, a Primeval Titan. Wow, both of those cards be really great. There's a Talarian Academy as well, but not a lot of artifacts. So I don't think we're doing the artifact ramp thing. I want to just take this Jace. It's the strongest blue card. It's really the only blue card in the pack. It'll continue to send signals to our right. The blue is not open. Here in this next pick, though, in pack two, there's a regrowth which could work out well for our time warp. Also a Chrome Mox. We are three colors right now if we're going to play this Grist, and the Chrome Mox can really help us fix and ramp out to these strong three and four mana Planeswalkers. But let's take the regrowth. There's some great spells I'm going to want to cast multiple times. Sylvan Carry added also a great pickup because it's going to fix our colors. Ooh, and then we get Noble Hierarch, Breeding Pool, Questing Beast. A lot of great cards there, but we have to slam the Noble Hierarch. It's just going to help us cast our spells. There's the other Hierarch for black as well. Okay, liking the way this is shaping up. Ooh, another a tree speaker. Yeah, so this is why we picked up the Crater Hoof. When Crater Hoof wheels, that means no one else is playing green. And we're probably going to get all these nice, juicy green one drops for our deck. 
Woodfall Primus, Wall of Roots. I'm not a great big Wall of Roots fan, so I guess we'll pick up the Woodfall Primus. It is useful, but I really want to natural order that thing out. Edric Spire Master of Trust is in our colors. It's not the greatest card, but it could enable some draw. Acidic Slime is a great add. Love that utility five drop, especially with a Black Lotus that just makes these five drops so much easier to cast. There's a Revoker and a Gush. I think Revoker is pretty useful. So I think I want to pick up the Revoker here. There's also a Snuff Out if we were playing more black, but we, I don't think I'm always going to have a Swamp to pay for Snuff Out for free. We know that Revoker was castable and will likely make the deck. Don't think we want any of these cards. We're really not looking like a Dark Confident deck with our eight drops. Right now our Snapcaster Mage is looking a little suspicious since we don't have a lot of spells. Ooh, there's a Dark Slick Shores. Nice. That'll be perfect to help fix our mana to cast this Grist. Take a removal spell for the board. Bitter Blossom, Massacre Worm. Probably not casting a Massacre Worm, so we'll take the Bitter Blossom. And then rounding out pack two. All right, pack three. Give us something juicy. There's an Oracle, Battle Sphere, a Mana Vault, and a Leovold, and a Phyrexian Metamorph. All those cards are great. I'm thinking, though, that I'm going to want to take the Mana Vault. It's just too good to help us cast our spells. Yes, we already have some one drop acceleration, but Mana Vault is also just very, very helpful. And we're definitely going to get something to wheel from there. There's Raphelos. Yeah. I think that's what we want to get right now. We already have the regrowth, so we don't need the eternal witness. Hmm. I love me a brazen borrower, and there's also a dream root cascade, but the interactivity of brazen borrower is very, very strong in this format. So I think I want to pick that up, and then maybe this dream root cascade will wheel. Circle of Dream Druids, Treasure Cruise, Jetaxis. None of these cards I'm really super interested in. I'll take a Garrick the Relentless for the sideboard, but it's probably not going to make it. Ooh, Tropical Island. That's perfect. Yeah, we got to slam that card. Even though there was a Consecrated Sphinx in there, we want our mana fixing. And then Repeal versus Tamio. Tamio could be quite strong. I'm not a great big fan of Repeal, and I'd like to try out this new Kamigawa card. So Tamio, Completed Sage, get in here. Some great art, by the way, on that card. Ooh, there's a Guy's Cradle. Yeah, gonna have to slam the Guy's Cradle. That was very helpful. Gilded Drake, an Avenger of Zendikar. Uh, I'll take the Gilded Drake uh, for the board. Let me get a Plow Under. And ooh, there's a Leovold. Yeah, okay. This can solidify us into Soul Tie for sure. I was kind of on the fence about Grist, though Grist is super strong. So this Leovold's going to, you know, cement us into Soul Tie. Take a Sower for the sideboard. Sower is actually a pretty strong card. There's a Kozilek, Inquisition Kozilek, but not going to play it. We're just splashing black, so I don't want a black one drop. Circle of Dreams Druid, probably not going to make the deck. We need to make some cuts here. And I'm thinking that our Snapcaster Mage just isn't going to make it. Uh, we just don't have enough spells. And here we have an Endurance versus an Arbor Elf. I'm just going to pick up the one drop again. All right, so that rounds out pack three. All right, here is the deck. We have cut it down and trimmed the fat, and I'm excited to take this Soul Tie 40 into the league. We are going to jump straight into match three, and it is some epic, epic gameplay. And I accomplished something that I have never done before in a magic match. So with that, let's get straight into the action. Okay, here we are, straight into match three. We are on the play, gonna have to mulligan that hand. But here's a hand with Black Lotus. So yeah, I think this is a keeper. Or what are we gonna put back? Uh, I think we put back the Magus of the Order, though, I don't know. I, I don't wanna put back the land. And I wanna keep the regrowth, so and I definitely want our mana and accelerants. So we're, let's play here this island, turn one. Let's play the Black Lotus. And I'm thinking up some shenanigans here with this regrowth. Let's get our one drops on the battlefield here. 
because then they'll be active next turn and we'll pass the turn and then next turn we'll be able to use this regrowth to get the black lotus back and ooh, there's a crater hoof all right cool let's regrowth this black lotus and then we should use be able to use that to get the tamio down turn two tamio has got to be pretty good Get that black lotus back all right here's a uh, black lotus number two so this is mana generating by one and yeah let's crack this again and let's get tamio on the battlefield yeah and then guess what tamio can do tamio can down tick for zero all right black lotus number three triple lotus turn two your turn opponent good luck i mean we are just holding a crater hoof but that felt awesome our opponent Knight's Whispers. I would love to be able to down tick this Tamio some more. I guess it's good that Tamio exiles whatever it makes a token of, because that would just be completely broken with this Black Lotus. There's a Jace. <laughs> oh yes, that was an awesome draw. Fortunately, we're gonna have to crack this Lotus again to play it. We just have no other mana sources, but turn two Tamio into turn three Jace. Sign me up. We'll obviously brainstorm here and hope to find a, a land to play. Okay, no land, but we do get a Rafelos, which is not good because we have no forest right now, and a Foth. So we'll put back the Rafelos and the Crater Hoof here. Well, I guess we'll put back the Rafelos and the Foth. I think I should put back the Crater Hoof because we could just cast Foth now, which would probably be pretty good. We'll uptick the Tamio. And then uh, we can attack here with our Hierarch. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that put what I put back there. I think I should have kept the Foth to play the Foth because we really need to hit a land. We could have Fofed right there for a land and played it. Yeah, our Mana Vault would be tapped. Uh, I guess but this way we have a potential to cast a Crater Hoof soon. All right, our opponent plays a Rotting Registar. And I don't think they know how Tamio works because Tamio is going to tap that down. So we're going to be making our opponent discard here while upticking our planeswalker yeah love it let's brainstorm again off the jace come on land no land well i mean an island so i think we need to foff here not sure why i put back the crater hoof that's going to make our foff not quite so good i mean i put it back because it leaves our brazen borrower and foff open so super super flexible but if we foff with Crater Hoof Behemoth, I, the opponent's going to put the Behemoth in the other pile, probably. All right, our opponent discards an Inferno Titan and a Worm Coil Engine for their turn. I wonder if they have some reanimator shenanigans going on. Gonti, all right. I think we Foff in response here. Maybe we find a Counterspell of some sort. Mm, yep, see, so there's that Crater Hoof we put back. I definitely want the Gaia's Cradle. It's going to make our life a lot easier i mean if our opponent's gonna 4-1 split i'll just take the four pile yeah crater hoof goes to the graveyard but i think we can find a way to win without crater hoof gonti resolves for our opponent they pass the turn there we go a forest nice but the guy's cradle is going to be more helpful Ooh, and a grist okay love me some grist so let's just put these two lands back. Let's get the Gaius Cradle down. And we'll be able to play the Gaius Cradle, the Grist, and potentially another one of our creatures. A little bit of a missed sequence here. I should definitely play the Arbor Elf first for free. So that way the Gaius Cradle taps for one more. But actually, so I, I play the four Arbor Elf because I want to get this Gonti off the board. I don't want a Death Toucher attacking us. And now we have some Super Friends action going on. I wonder if we can get this Tamio up to eight and then we can down ticker for a Crater Hoof Behemoth token. All right, Swift End on our Planeswalker. I tried a Petty Theft, but Petty Theft only works on an opponent's creatures, unfortunately. So that's just going to resolve. And then they play a Suspicious Stowaway. Okay. 
another land. So let's make our insect token. I think I misplay here a little bit as well. See, so I could down tick and make a token copy of Jace. That'd be pretty great. But right now I think my plan, I wanna actually make a copy of this Crater Hoof Behemoth and the Suspicious Stowaway being unblockable is not great. So we should uptick Tamio on the Suspicious Stowaway and then just chump the Riding Registrar, probably holding up Brazen Borrower. But instead I uptick on the Registrar again, which means our Tamio's gonna get attacked. All right, we can get in there with the ignoble hierarch. You would have thought casting Black Lotus three times this game would have been a much quicker win, but <laughs> here we are. I do love tapping down this Registrar and just making our opponent discard each turn. Scarab God. All right, that's a problem. They have some juicy targets there in their graveyard. So we cannot let them untap with this Scarab God. We could just Frexian Revoker it and then the Scarab God won't be able to activate. But I think I want to just Petty Theft the Scarab God back to their hand. They are at 14. I think we may be able to flash out our Brazen Borrower as well. We're going to have to tap the Mana Vault. It's pretty bad use of Mana Vault for just one mana. But this will get a 3-1 Flyer on the battlefield. And we can start attacking them down. With our Exalted Trigger, that means we'll be doing 4 damage a turn. Another land, okay. So without a way to draw cards. Now I think I should kind of switch gears. I'm still trying to uptick this Tamio now so I can ultimate our Crater Hoof Behemoth in 2 turns. But if our plan is just to nug them in the air, I think I should have down ticked Tamio on Jace and just made a copy of Jace. And that would have been much stronger. So a little loose gameplay here. We will get in there for six. I do expect our opponent to just recast Scarab God this next turn. Our opponents are all sorts of colors over there. Yep, here comes the Scarab God. going to chump with this insect token. Draga tree speaker. Okay, we're good on mana. So we can take our Tamio up to eight here, which means we'll be able to create a hoof next turn. Going to go ahead and down tick on our grist and we can blow up either the scarab god or the Rotting Regisaur. I think just keeping the Scare God off the battlefield is the best bet. Get in there for five. See, we're not even gonna need this Crater Hoof, but I kinda really just want to make a token of a Crater Hoof now. We'll play the Revoker, it's just another blocker or another attacker. We'll name the Scarab God, though. I don't think that's the right card to name. Probably should name something like Liliana or something, so one of the Planeswalkers. <laughs> so our opponent returned the Scarab God to the hand, no choice, but now they have to discard it <laughs> from the Registrar. Oh, and they give up. All right. Good game, opponent. Good game. We cast Black Lotus three times. think there's really any changes I want to make to this deck from the sideboard. Uh, maybe Sora Temptation. We saw so many strong creatures from them. Sora could be a pretty decent card. Also, Gilded Drake is a potential. They were just running some strong creatures. So, Sora of Temptation and Gilded Drake in. Take out this Acidic Slime. I didn't see really any artifacts from them and we'll run this new version back. All right, game two. Is this hand keepable? I don't think it is. Even with a Mana Vault and a Guy's Cradle, 
I don't have any blue mana. So let's send that one back. I guess this is a keep because we can finale for a card. We just got to hope they don't kill our tree speaker. Opponent leads off on Field of the Dead. We are on a draw, so hopefully we can draw something decent here. Factor Fiction was a good draw. We'll play out the Tree Speaker. All right, opponent leading out on the Mox Ruby. Okay, they got their 7-6 back on the battlefield. All right, well, we're probably going to take a couple hits from that guy. It's another land. So we'll be able to Factor Fiction or Devastation next turn. The Registrar is quite a clock and a Gaunti. This is looking just like last game from them, except for the Mox and the fact that we didn't cast Black Lotus three times. Yep. Get in there. I can't block. Need my mana. A hoof. Ooh. I don't... <laughs> they got to be a little bit lower life total for a hoof to work here or to have a couple more creatures. If we had some one drop creatures, that'd be super helpful. Actually, there's a way we could get out of this here. We could finale of devastation for three. So let's do that. And I think we can go get our grist. So, and then we can just make a chump blocker for this Regisar, and that'll buy us a lot of time. And where is grist? Okay, I don't see grist. We didn't side him out, right? Oh, so our opponent stole Grist with Gaunti? Well, that's not good. Um, What are we going to grab now that Grist isn't here? We could get Revoker and name Grist. Or we could get this Gilded Drake and steal the Regisar. I think those are our two lines. We don't, or we get Rafelos, though... I don't have enough one drops out on the battlefield. We get two more. We get one more turn after this, essentially. So how do we stabilize in that one turn? If we get Gilded Drake and they play Grist, they're just going to kill our Regisar. And then they're going to have a 3-3 flyer. Or if we get Revoker, we're still at the mercy of our draws here. I guess we could chump with Revoker eventually, but then they'll have a Grist back active. Yeah, not a not a great position for us either way so we'll take the gilded drake this will give them a 3-3 flyer unfortunately i kind of expect them to down tick on the grist and kill the registrar but maybe they won't and we're still gonna take five here yeah i don't know if that was the greatest line I think Revoker on Grist was probably the right, the right bet and just take nine this last turn, which would put us down to four. They'd have a one, one. Yep. See, there's, there's my Grist looking good, Grist. So we'll discard the Swamp. I guess, is there a way that we can play this Crater Hoof? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're a mana short from the Crater Hoof right now. But we can attack Grist with the Regisar, which will make them chump block with the Insect Token. And then we do have Factor Fiction, and maybe we can draw something decent. So I think we Factor Fiction now to see if we can draw some more stuff. Ooh, Time Warp, Rafelos, and Tamio. Oh, wow. I kind of want the Time Warp pile. Though, if we take Time Warp, it's going to make us discard additionally. Tamio could lock down. Well, Tamio's not a good bet because Grist is out. And Grist can just sack stuff to destroy a Planeswalker. So I think we take pile two here. We take the Time Warp and the Rafelos. We cannot play Time Warp this turn, unfortunately. But we can definitely get the Rafelos on the battlefield. And we're just going to have to take five here this next turn. All 
Our opponent plays Vorast Stronghold. They have an Archon of Cruelty in the graveyard. We just got to take five here. Are they going to uptick on Grist or are they going to destroy something? Mm, they are going to destroy it. They're probably going to destroy this Rafelos. Okay. Interesting that they sack the Flyer because that represented lethal damage next turn. Probably a misplay there by the opponent. All right, we got to ditch the Forest. Ooh, we draw Black Lotus. Can we do everything now? We have two, four, five, six, seven. With the Black Lotus would be 10. No, so we can't Time Warp and Crater Hoof. But I think Crater Hoof is lethal on its own. If I have, so the Black Lotus lets us have all three attackers, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so with the Black Lotus, we can sack the Lotus, tap all of our mana, not tap the Dra Draga Tree Speaker, and that's eight. And we can play the Hoof, and then everything's gonna get plus three, plus three. So the Hoof would be eight. 10 on the Regisaur, and then 4 on the Tree Speaker. And that's 22 damage. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a removal spell. I think that's the line here. I'm like triple counting this mana here. Triple counting for the number of times we cast Black Lotus in the first game. But so this will be our fourth cast of Black Lotus in two games, which will be amazing. See, and this is why Hoof is just such a beater. We're going to do more than 20 points of damage in one turn. Granted, we have a 7-6 Registar, but Hoof, Guy's Cradle, Lotus, all broken cards. <laughs> that was it. Oh, man, what a game three. That was awesome. Aston Lotus three times in one game. Achievement unlocked there. And thanks for watching. Thanks for chilling with me here. And I'll see you next time.